Good evening. I'm going to just adjust this a little bit here. I see it's not quite right. There we go. So this evening, welcome to Undo and Renew. You're going to want some pillows and a yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, just stack up a towel or two in the shape of a block. You can put one on top of the other um, and adjust as needed for the size. And then a bolster or a pillow, a few pillows. Um, the more you have, the more comfortable you'll be. So just gather your props, find your way onto the mat. We'll start in a comfortable seat. So you can bring your block or your props underneath you. Scoot yourself forward on the block or props. So the pelvis is lifted, but tilted a little bit towards the feet. And then you can bring the hands on top of the thighs and just arrive and start to tune in. As you inhale, notice the body expanding, that lightness in the body. As you exhale, notice where you're touching the earth. And then just lean forward just a little bit, lean back a little bit and see if you can find that place, maybe even side to side, find the place where the bones just stack up. So the place of least effort. Breathing down into the belly, just allowing that body to expand on the inhale. On the exhale, feeling the support of the earth below you. And tonight we're going to focus on grounding, feeling grounded on earth, working on the legs. And just feeling this connectedness to earth so that we can, basically earth can absorb our extra frenetic energy, just like lightning um, grounds itself to earth. Electricity is grounded by putting a copper pole into the earth so that when things get really um, frenetic and overpowered, the earth can absorb that extra energy. So we always wanna keep ourselves grounded to earth so that when we start to feel a little frazzled, we know we still have the support of earth below us. Just take another deep breath in. As you exhale, feeling the support of earth underneath you. And we'll start with some self massage to open up the legs. So you're gonna just bend your elbow and lean into this spleen meridian just inside the legs, just with the elbow leaning in and then unbending the elbow. And then walking down a few inches, leaning in, unbending the elbow. So in Chinese medicine, the spleen meridian is also connected to earth. We'll work through these meridians that run down the legs. So you walk yourself down to your knee and then back up to the thigh, to the hip, and then come over to the other side, just leaning in. So using your body weight,
Walk yourself back up towards the pelvis. And just let it be juicy. It can be a little tender. So go back to the first leg once you finish the second. So you get to control how much you lean in. You get to control the elbow, lean into that flat spot, not that pokey part, and just let the elbow unbend. Walk yourself back up. And then one more time down the second leg. And walking back up. And then we'll come back up to cedar. We're just gonna brush down from the pelvis and along the inside of the legs, just opening up that whole spleen meridian. And then we'll come to the front foot, whichever foot is stacked in front, you're gonna take both your thumbs and just start walking along the arch there. So again, you're just leaning in to walk along the arch with your thumbs. Walk back up. And then back down. And then we're gonna press into the metatarsal on the bottom of the foot. Is a right in the metatarsal arch is a little um, point called kidney one. It's the beginning of the kidney meridian. So just taking both your thumbs and just leaning into that little metatarsal arch. And then draw yourself back up and we're just gonna squeeze the nail bed around the toes. So the side of the big toe, we're gonna give it a big squeeze with the thumb and first finger. That's where these meridians begin and end. And then the second toe, just squeeze. And then just go ahead and walk down the foot, squeezing around the sides of the toenails. Waking that foot up. Waking up that place that connects you to earth. And then lean back, bring your other leg in front. And once again, just coming in to walk the thumbs in the arch. So just using, you don't even need to use the muscles of the arms. You can just use the body weight, leaning in with the body weight. Walking back up. And then coming into that metatarsal, that little spot right under the ball of the foot, right behind the ball of the foot and just leaning into that point. It's called bubbling spring. You can think about just sending, it's where your roots grow down to earth. So we just wanna open that up. And then go ahead and just squeeze those nail beds. So if you don't, if your fingers are, are sore for any reason, just use the sides of the knuckle, the size of fingers, like bend your hand, you can see there, bend fingers and just squeeze this way. So you're just squeezing on the sides of the toenails. First the big one, then the second one. Let yourself have a full breath in and full breath out. Walk down the foot. Perfect, and then come back to just this comfortable seat and just close up the eyes for a moment and see if you feel any different in the legs. Part of yoga is bringing the mind and the body into alignment. So it's just noticing what's going on inside the body. Good. 
And then for our first pose today, we're gonna to come into legs up the wall. Now, if you have a wall, please set your mat up alongside the wall, shorten alongside the wall. If you don't have a wall, it's okay. You can still use your folded towels to get there virtually. I'll show you both. So if you have a wall, bring your side body to the wall. And then you're just gonna lean back and spin yourself around. So the legs can come up the wall. The knees can be soft. If the hamstrings are quite tight, the knees might be even bent. If you have a wall, I highly recommend taking this at the wall. If you don't have a wall that you can work at, you can bring your block underneath the sacrum so you can lift the pelvis a little bit and then that's going to help just balance the legs up. So wherever you're at, start to settle into this pose. First bring your hands to your belly, just notice what's going on. Notice any sensations in the body. Breathing into that area underneath the hands. Notice how as you really inflate and make space in the body. Those organs feel like they're filling up the hands. And then you can release the arms to the side. Wiggle the shoulder blades together in the back. Let the palms shine towards the ceiling and just settle in. If you feel a lot of extension, like you're pointing the chin towards the ceiling, see if you can relax and bring the chin towards the chest, just a little bit, head is still heavy on the mat. And check out where your tongue is in your mouth. If the tongue is really um, tight against the roof of the mouth, see if you can relax it down. I just want to open from a, a little writing by Arit Sen Gupta. She's a yogi who's had many master teachers. And when she was writing about the, the five elements, she wrote, the mind rests at the place where the body touches the earth. Let the weight of the body sink into this place. Let the body sink into earth. Feel the downward movement flowing through the body. As the roots of a tree deepen and widen into the earth, so the branches expand into the sky. As rooting is mastered, the body becomes light, and loose and moves without effort. So let gravity do all the work here. If your legs get quite tired or start to feel a little sparkly, just bend the feet, bring the soles of the feet together so that you're in a butterfly at the wall. If you're on a block, you can just bend the knees towards the chest, take a few breaths there, and then come back. And again, just noticing the sensations as we reverse gravity in the legs.
We'll just take about five more breaths here. So see if you can make each of these breaths a little longer than the previous. So that with each breath, you really start to relax the upper body onto the mat on the exhalation, really starting to release. And then we're gonna move the feet just a little bit away from each other. So the legs are parallel, more in line with the hips. And then go ahead and bend the right knee and place the right ankle over the left um, thigh. So below the knee. Now, if you're on the mat, you're just gonna bring your knees into um, bridge prep with the feet on the floor and then do the same thing. So the left foot's on the floor, the right leg is bent, right ankle over left knee, below the left knee. And then here we're coming into a cobbler or figure four. So just take a moment, take your right hand, if you're at the wall or even in with the knee bent and the left foot on the floor and just open up with the right arm pressing into that right thigh. Take another full breath in and a full breath out here. And then we're gonna just gently start to bend the left knee, to open up the right thigh. So it might just come just an inch down the wall, even, even extended might feel like enough. Otherwise, you can start to bring the sole of the left foot onto the wall and just gently bend the left knee. So you have this little unit of tension, of tensegrity that's opening the right leg, opening the outside of the IT band. And once you find your edge, back off the edge just a little bit so you're about 70% and just relax into the pose here. Keep those breaths nice and deep. Inhaling that sense of space in the body. Moving into that space as the body begins to unwind. See if you can find five more breaths here. You're going to start to extend the left foot up towards the ceiling. Unwind the right leg so both legs are extended back on the, on the wall. If you're working on the floor, just come back into your bridge prep and then notice any difference between the two legs. And then bend the left foot, bend the left knee rather, place the left ankle right underneath the right knee. Take your left arm into the left thigh. <sighs> Open up that thigh, full breath in. Just pressing the left hand into the left thigh. And then release the hold of the leg with the hand and start bending the right knee. So you're, if you're on the floor, the right foot's on the mat, and then you're just interlacing the hands behind the right thigh and drawing it towards you. If you're at the wall, you're just starting to bend your knee, feeling where that edge is, at the place you can't go past, and then just backing off it a little bit.
And we're reversing the flow of the fluids here. So just allow the legs to release, like gravity do all the work. There's nothing to do here once you have the little tensegrity unit. Taking about five more breaths here. And then extending the right foot up. Unwinding both legs. Notice how the legs feel. Maybe take a few. Uh, Pointing, extending in the feet and the ankle or roll the ankles out just a bit. And then bend the knees towards the chest. Take a full breath in, full breath out. Feel how the lower back expands onto the mat. And then you can extend the arms up overhead. Again, take a full breath in, full breath out. And then roll yourself off, draw yourself up. Take all the time you need. We're gonna meet in a tabletop for just a moment. And start with just taking some hip circles here. So we're just going to see where our edges are. Pause, change direction of the circle. And then go ahead and cross the feet at the ankles, coming to lie on the back. So we're really going to work on this lower part of the body tonight. You're going to want your block or your towels nearby. And you can roll back onto the back, find a bridge prep pose. We'll lift the pelvis and just place those towels that block underneath the sacrum. So below the spine. So you don't you don't want to feel it on the spine. It's just lifting the pelvis. Find your steadiness. Feel the support of earth, and then perhaps you can start to extend the legs. So you're going to feel a big opening in the groin in front of the hip flexors. If that's too much, just keep the legs bent. Stay in that bridge prep. Just get the traction in the lower spine. And then again, start to walk the shoulders together, open the palms towards the ceiling. Settle into the breath. On each exhale, just letting gravity do the work. So feeling where the body is touching the mat or touching the ground. And just with each exhalation, relaxing into that. Allowing the front of the hips to open up. If you feel any crunchiness in the spine, extend your shoulders up towards the short end of the mat. And go back to that idea of the mind resting at the place where the body touches the earth. See if you can let your mind rest where your body is touching the earth. Let the weight of the body sink into this place. Let the body sink into earth.
and check in with your breath. Come back to that nice, deep, long inhalation. Nice, deep, long exhalation. Just finding about five more breaths here. Letting the mind go to that place where the body is touching the earth. One more breath. And then bend the knees. Press into the feet, lift the pelvis, remove the block or the prop underneath you, and then just roll back down. We're gonna take a series of breathing breaths here in in a bridge prep as we tilt the pelvis back and forth so what that's going to look like if you haven't done this before put your hand behind your back in the small of the back you'll feel there's an arch there as you take a big breath in you feel that the arch gets bigger and the pelvis tilts a little bit towards the feet but it's still on the mat and as you exhale press the belly button towards the spine and feel how the spine comes into the hand. That's the sensation we wanna create. So once you get that and you, and you know what that is, take your hand back out, allow the shoulders to be open, palms towards the ceiling, take a full breath in, pelvis tilts towards the feet. As you exhale, draw the belly button towards the spine, spine towards the mat, flatten the lower back onto the mat. Expel all the stale air, and on your inhale, just release, and let the pelvis tilt back towards the feet, natural curve in the back. We'll take a series of about six more. Exhale, draw the belly button towards the spine, spine towards the mat. Press out all the stale air, really expel anything you're holding. And then on the inhale, just let that natural curve come back into the mat as the pelvis tilts towards the feet. Exhaling. Belly button towards the spine, spine on the mat, expanding the space between each of the vertebra and that lower lumbar, really staying and pressing in there until there's nothing else to exhale, and then releasing, letting the natural curve come back to the back. Go ahead and take four more on your own. See if you can make the breath nice and deep, nice and long, really expel all the stale air. Get it all out, feeling where the body's touching the earth, keeping your mind adhered to that place as you just roll up and down that lower lumbar. And we're creating a little pump in the sacrum here. So by doing this, we're really getting that cranial sacral fluid moving up the spinal cord, around the brain, Go ahead and find one more here. And then you can release the technique after the next exhalation. Bring the hands back to the belly and just notice any sensations. Fill the belly, feel that fullness under the hands. And then we're gonna take a little piriformis stretch here. So walk the left foot in towards the center and stack the right knee over the left. So the piriformis is a muscle that runs through the lower back, through the buttocks, through the pelvis. And yogis are known to have quite uh, tight, can get quite tight there and cause a lot of pain. So, Start to bring the knees towards you and then just rock a little side to side till you can feel that lower back on the mat. And then interlace the hands around the legs. With each exhalation, draw those legs towards you. Some people like to take the legs apart and hold on to that area of the lower leg. 
or the right above the ankle. So you can try both. If you if you're going for the, the area of the lower legs, flex the feet a little bit so you protect the knees. So this is called whale tail. Just keep drawing those legs towards you. Relaxing into any sensations, exhaling out any tension. If you feel any stress in the knees, go back to just interlacing the hands over the top of the knees. We'll be here for about five more breaths. So once again, going back to the breath, keeping those inhalations and those exhalations nice and long, nice and juicy. And then go ahead and release the hold of the legs. Keep the legs stacked. Bring the left foot onto the mat. We're gonna come into a little twist. So pick up the pelvis, press on the left foot, draw the pelvis over to the right, set the right, set it down on the right. This is twisted roots. You might be able to bring your right foot behind. You might not. See if you can bring the legs over to the left. Now, if the legs don't come all the way to the floor, bring your bolster underneath your legs. So you're taking a little twisted roots. Hands can be out to the side. Press into the arm bones. See if you can lift the shoulders and get the shoulders more evenly onto the mat. Take a full breath in and on an exhale, just look towards the right hand. Perhaps you can start to open up the cervical spine by looking towards the right hand. And then just settle in. We're gonna be here for about two more minutes. So there's no need to push the head to look to the right, just allow it to unwind. Keep the support in the legs so you don't overextend. And use the breath to go deeper into the shape, deeper into the pose. Perhaps on your exhale, you can feel that the body wants to relax even more. Perhaps there's something else you can just let go. Keep those breaths nice and long. The breath is what's gonna help you go deeper into the shape. So you're creating space with the breath and the body. And then the body is moving into that space. about five more breaths. And then you can press into the left foot to come out. First, take your head back to center and then roll back onto the back. Unwind the legs gently and slowly, and then bring the hips back to center. Hug the knees towards the chest. Just rock a little side to side. Give yourself that 
big old hug, like you're meeting an old friend. And then we're gonna place the right foot back in the center. So walk the foot back in just a little bit centered, stack the left knee over the right. Go ahead and move your bolster to the other side so you're ready for the twist. And then we'll start with our whale tail, that piriformis stretch, just draw the knees towards you. Rock a little bit first to make sure that you have that space in the lower back. And then maybe just start with the hands interlaced. Take a few breaths there. And if it feels nice to go a little deeper, you can flex the feet, pass the legs above the ankles. So you're drawing that shape towards you. And if that feels like too much or something feels pinched, come out of the shape, go back to the first one. In these restorative poses, we don't want to go all the way to the edge. It's not going to help us relax. We want to find the edge and then back off and let the body unwind itself. And then the edge will grow and be a little bit farther away. If we push ourselves to the edge, the body contracts. It does the opposite of what we want. We want it to just relax and unwind and feel safe. Come back to the breath, come back to the mind, adhering itself to where the body touches the earth. Just five more breaths here. And then go ahead, release the hold of the legs or the feet. Bring that right foot back to center. Depending where you're at, you might want to tuck the left foot behind. You might not. Yogi's choice. Twist it first to the other side. Press into the right foot. Pick up the pelvis. Take it a little over to the left and set it down. And then we're taking the twist over to the right. So just let the legs roll over to the right. Take a full breath in, see what your range is, see where your edge is. And then perhaps you can press into the arm bones, lift the shoulders, find your symmetry. And once you feel that unwinding the legs and the support, underneath the legs that you can release into, perhaps you want to start looking towards the left. Opening up the cervical spine. And you'll find that even if you just look towards the left to start, to start eventually the head is going to want to move that direction. So without even pushing it, you can just look with your eyes and then eventually the weight of the head will start to carry itself over. And then go back to that breath and notice how as you take a little bit deeper inhalation, you can create a little bit more space in between each of those ribs, along this um, spiral that we're working on, and the body can move into that space.
So you can find five to seven more breaths here with each of these breaths, just allowing gravity to take you any deeper. And then to come out of the shape, first draw the head towards the ceiling and then press into the right foot. Draw yourself back up, unwind the legs, draw the knees towards you, rock a little side to side. And then we'll take the palms to the top of the kneecaps and just take a big circle with the knees. So here we're giving ourselves a little massage along that sacroiliac joint. And then pause when you're in symmetry, take the circle the opposite direction. And then bring the knees all the way back into the chest. We're gonna just row the boat for a second here. Let the legs come away from you and then open the legs, draw them back towards you. So as if you're taking yourself across the lake. One more like that. And then the next time the knees come towards the chest, take it the opposite direction. So the legs come out and then towards you. Just bringing some fluid into those hip joints. We're gonna work those a little bit more and we turn the body over. Go ahead and take one more round here. And then we're gonna come back into a tabletop. You can either take the leg, the arms uh, alongside the body and roll yourself to the side. If you feel kind of spicy, you can roll yourself up from the tailbone to the shoulders. Give yourself a little back massage. And then we're all gonna turn around and find that tabletop once again with those hip circles. So tucking the toes and taking this juicy movement with the, drawing the hips back towards the heels, drawing the shoulders up over the wrists and just seeing if the edge changed. Noticing if the circle is round, if it has a flat spot or there's tension, see if you can pause there and press into that. Notice what's there and then change direction of the circle. So just nice, slow and juicy movement. And then you'll find your way back to center. We're gonna come all the way down onto the belly. Bring a block with you, or you can stack your arms or wrists up and place the forehead over the wrist. Start by shaking the hips a little side to side, remove any tension, walk the feet towards the short end of the mat so that you don't have any, um, any tension or crunchiness in the lower back. And we're gonna come into a crocodile here. So you're gonna start to open up the right leg, Slide the right leg along the floor so that the knee is coming directly out the level of the hip. Lower leg coming 90 degrees from the thigh. And then if it's bony on the other side of the left side of the hip, um, place a towel or something underneath there. Otherwise you can just open that right knee out towards the right and then place the head on the pillow, 
or the forearms and just settle in. And coming back to the breath, noticing where you feel the compression of the belly against the earth is one of those places where you are you can bring the mind to rest. So as you inhale air into the belly, you might feel a little bit of um, pressure against the belly, that supportive earth. Just let the mind rest there. Let the weight of the body sink into that place. Breathing in anywhere you feel tension. Let that space where you feel tension expand as you inhale, expand with the breath, and then exhale out the tension. Moving into the space that you're creating. It's going to find about five more breaths here on this side. When you feel ready, just glide that right leg back to meet the left. Shake the hips a little side to side. And then you'll just come straight onto the other side. So glide the left leg along the mat. The thighs 90 degrees from the body, lower leg 90 degrees from the thigh. The foot is flexed 90 degrees away from the lower leg. And then press the leg out to the left, brings the pelvis a little bit more level onto the floor, and then just relax onto your towel or your hands stacked. Keeping the breath coming to the belly. Let the mind rest in that place where the body touches the earth, feeling the groundedness. Feeling the downward movement flowing through the body. The mind starts to wander, just come back to the breath. If you can find five more breaths here. Bring those breaths deep into the belly. The weight of the body sink into that place. The body sink into earth as you exhale. Feel the downward movement flow through the body.
And then go ahead and extend the left leg back to meet the right. Shake the hips side to side. And then we're going to press back into that tabletop. Make those hip circles once again, noticing what's changing. Change direction, pressing into anywhere you feel tension, anywhere the circle doesn't feel round. And then crossing the feet at the ankles, we're going to come to find a seat back on the mat. We're going to come into cow face pose. And if you know you have a little tightness in the hips, come to sit on your towel or your block just to lift the pelvis slightly. And then we'll try cow face pose first. If that doesn't work for you, for you I'll give you an um, alternative. So we're going to bring the left leg down in front of us. Tuck that left foot back underneath the right thigh as much as you can. And then stack the right knee over the left. OK, so this is your cow right here. Got it? And if that top leg isn't resting completely down, Take a bolster or pillow and just bring something between the legs so you can feel the support. Now, if that doesn't work, unwind yourself, take the left leg long in front of you and just stack the right leg over the left. Now, if you are coming into that, you probably want to come off of the pillow that you're sitting on. But same thing, you can put another something and prop on the leg. So find whichever pose is going to work for you. And then we're going to lean into the feet. So take the heel of the hand and giving ourselves a nice massage there in the arches. Once again, just leaning forward. If you're in the extended uh, shoelace pose, you're just doing one, one foot at a time. And again, you can just lean into this. Take your whole body weight into those feet. Just walk back and forth. And then you can turn the hands around so the fingers are behind you and really lean into the heels. So into that calcanus. So I'm taking the heel of my hand, leaning in there. All the fascia ends in the feet. So just really unwinding the whole body by releasing the feet. Pressing into the arch, whatever feels good. Just use the body weight. If it's available, you can even lean into the heels or the feet and lift the pelvis up. And then we'll take the other side. So unwind the legs. Bring the right leg to the bottom or extend the right leg out. Place the left knee over the right. And then just start by giving yourself a little foot massage. So no effort, no uh, tension in the hands, just leaning in. Turning the hands around, leaning into those that heel, the outside edge of the heel. Let that feel nice and juicy. Just a few more breaths here. Just enjoying these feet. Thanking these little Making these little feet that support us.
Beautiful. And then we're going to unwind the legs and come into our very supportive, very restorative reclined butterfly. Now, I encourage you to, if you're watching this video, pause the video, go grab as many pillows as you can find in the whole house and build yourself a wedge so that it's at an angle, okay? Um, you're gonna want something to put under the head so the neck doesn't, you don't want the neck showing all the way off. You're also gonna wanna, you're gonna save at least two pillows in the house or two towels to put under your knees. Other than that, you can grab the couch cushions and just build yourself a wedge. This one's pretty small. You can really come up in 45 degrees if you want. Um, it's, it's a really nice pose to just relax into. Any time of the day, you'll bring your feet into butterfly for this. And I'm facing this way so I can show you. It's quite nice to weave the toes together. So I just weave, wove, weaved the toes into the negative space between each toe. If that feels nice, find that. And then you're gonna bring your sacrum to the back. Um, bring the pillow right to the sacrum, the back. Weave your toes together if that feels good or just bring the soles of the feet. Have your, the only two pillows that are left in the whole house under your knees. Have yourself supported and then just lean back. Make sure that the neck, if your pillows are short, make sure you're not falling off the edge and extending the, the neck. And then gently roll one shoulder, lay it down, and then the other, have the palm shining towards the ceiling. Allow the eyes to close off if that feels comfortable and safe, and then just sink in. Each breath, allowing the shoulders to move away from each other and down so that the heart starts to open. And I invite you in this pose Open up your cheetah kasha, your mind's eye, that screen of imagination. And just remember the last time that you were barefoot on the earth. Maybe it was at the beach. Maybe it was a place where you could get mud between your toes. Just see if you can bring that memory back into your mind's eye. And as you recall this memory of the last time you had your feet barefoot on the earth, Try to call, recall that sensation, sensation of the feet on the earth. Was it moist, cool, comfortable, soft, hard? See if you can bring yourself to recall that sensation. And staying with the sensation and the visualization. It's 
See if you can bring yourself to remember the support you felt walking barefoot on the earth. The sense of stability. Sense of groundedness. Perhaps even a sense of nourishment. I'll take you a little deeper through a guided relaxation. Using auto-suggestion, you can follow the sound of my voice and silently repeat to yourself. If at any time the legs and butterfly doesn't feel comfortable, just extend the legs out and stay on the bolster. I relax my toes. I release my toes into the support of the earth. I relax the soles of my feet. I release the soles of my feet to the support of the earth. I relax my ankles. I release my ankles to support of the earth. I relax my calves, my shins, my lower legs. I release my calves, my shins, and my lower legs to the support of the earth. I relax my knees. I release my knees to the support of the earth. I relax my thighs. I release my thighs to the support of the earth. I relax my buttocks, my pelvis, my hips. I release my buttocks, my pelvis, my hips to the support of the earth. I relax my belly. Release my belly to the support of the earth. I relax my heart. I release my heart to the support of the earth. I relax my lower back, my middle back, my upper back. I release my entire back to the support of the earth. I relax my throat, my shoulders. I release my throat and my shoulders to the support of the earth. I relax my upper arms. I release my upper arms to the support of the earth. I relax my elbows. I release my elbows to the support of the earth. I relax my lower arms. Release my lower arms to the support of the earth. I relax my wrists. 
my palm, back of my hand, release the wrist, the palm, and the back of the hand to the support of the earth. I relax my thumb, my first finger, my middle finger. I relax my ring finger, my pinky, the tips of my fingers. And I relax the whole hand into the support of the earth. I relax my neck. I release my jaw. And I relax my neck, my jaw to feel the complete support from the earth. I relax my tongue, I relax my face, I relax my eyes. I release my tongue, my face, and my eyes to feel supported. On the earth. The whole body completely relaxed and supported into the earth. I relax my mind. I relax my mind. Even my mind knows I'm supported by the earth. Allow your mind's eye to travel back to that sensation of feeling barefoot. The last time you were barefoot on the earth. And just feel the grounding and the nourishment of that. Touching the earth and connecting to the earth, feeling supported by the earth Allow. As if you're drawing up the sense of groundedness up through the feet, up through the legs, as if they're roots, that you can draw this nourishment up from the earth. So that as Rooting is mastered, the body becomes light and loose and moves without effort. On your next few inhalations, just imagine that you're drawing up that earth energy up to the feet, into the legs, and mastering the sense of rootedness so that the body can become light and loose and move without effort. And as you do this, begin expanding each inhalation, 
be a little longer than the previous. Bringing all those sensations back into the physical body. And since you're in your home yoga shala, you can stay here in this relaxation as long as you like. When you're ready to awaken, you'll draw the legs out long first. And then depending how you stack your bolsters, you can either just roll up the side or you can use the arms to press yourself up. Taking all the time you need. So there's no need to awaken now. You're welcome to stay in this pose as long as you like. When you're feeling ready, just make sure you take the time to keep the gaze inward for a moment, transition slowly and allow yourself to just notice the changes in the body. So if you're ready now, I invite you to find a comfortable seat coming out of the pose. If you're not ready, just stay there with the breath. Before you end your practice, make sure you bring the hands to touch the heart, press the thumbs into the sternum, either hands together in prayer or perhaps one palm over the other. Just acknowledge yourself for this time you've given yourself to connect to yourself for your yoga. Honor that light inside of you that burns and shines so brightly. This light that we all share, each and every one of us. Cultivating this divine light in ourselves so that we can notice it in all other beings. Namaste. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide your practice wherever you are in the world. I hope you're finding your roots, finding a little sense of grounding, a sense of home.